somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, Brother Keith. Hallelujah. Would you welcome Keith Moore to this platform? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I apologize to you, sir, for being late. I was taking care of business. I understand. You understand that? I believe that. I ain't taking it away from your time. Right. Help yourself. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, sir. What a privilege. Yes. What an honor. Hallelujah. Are we glad to be here? Yes. Yes, we are. Father, in the name of Jesus, we set ourselves in agreement. We're asking you and believing together for utterance, precise, strong, answers and direction, a supply of the Spirit right now. We're asking you for every one of us for eyes that see, ears that hear, and a heart that understands and receives. And we purpose right now, whatever you say to us, whatever you show us, we'll not be hearers only, but we'll be doers of it. We'll put it into practice. And as we do, we know we'll be blessed because you always watch over your word and perform it in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You can be seated. Thank you, Brother Kenneth. Thank you, Miss Gloria. Thank you for the opportunity. It is such a high honor to minister to your fellow minister. And... Uh, uh, before I forget it, Miss Gloria asked me, would I let you know that uh, our materials, all of our teaching and preaching and our music, everything is available on our uh, internet site at no cost. Uh, you can get everything we got. For, it won't cost you anything. And so take advantage of that. If you, if you want anything we got, just get on there and either order it or they'll send it to you or just download it and uh, help yourself. And uh, amen. Would you go to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, please? 2 Corinthians, chapter 4. I would ask you to do what we just prayed. Believe with me for utterance. There's some things that I've never spoken on before. And. Um, you know how that is, you're believing God how to get there. And I know there's some things like all the Word of God, but there's some things in particular that unless they're spiritually discerned, uh, they're not discerned at all. <laughs> and uh, the anointing is our teacher. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. Say it out loud, the anointing, the anointing is, truth. is truth. The anointing, the anointing teaches me. Hallelujah. It's, it's beyond mental comprehension. Uh, I know I could just sense, sitting in here myself, you know, we're, we're hearing what's coming through the ministry gift at the time, but we're hearing more. Aren't you? I know you are. You get three sermons off of that three thing, one thing they said, that's uh, you're writing messages on other subjects. Yes. You're getting light on what you've been ministering on. And what does that? It's the anointing. The anointing just comes on you and you just know. You see and you hear and you know. In 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter and the 16th verse, 2 Corinthians 4, he said, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Everybody say outward man, outward man. Inward, man. inward man. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but, in other words, but we look at 
the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. There's an inward man. There's an outward man. This has not been real enough to us. People talk about being multitaskers. I got a better one for you. How about multidimensional? We are multidimensional beings. Our abilities in this regard have not been much understood. But what's available to us is, you have to talk in tongues to try to describe it. There's an inner man. There's an outer man. How can you look at things not seen? Well, let me back up. How can you see that which is not seen? The answer is by looking. <laughs> How do you see things that are seen? By looking at them. Hmm? Let me give you an example. I can't see you. Where are you? I know you're there. Huh? I can't see you. <laughs> I can't see you. Okay, my eyes are wide open. <laughs> I don't see you. Are you here? Huh? I don't see you. You must not be here. Because if you were here, I could see you. <laughs> Two things. In order to see you, I need to open my eyes. And I need to look at you. I need to look where you are. I need to look in the direction, in the area in the realm where you are. True? Look at it again. While we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Hallelujah. Uh, during this meeting, the Spirit of God is speaking a word to me. The word focus. Focus. Different ones would be speaking and it'd come up in my spirit again. Focus. I'd think what, I know a little bit about that. What does that mean, focus? And I want to talk about that in, in my time, the next few minutes here. Go with me to the book of uh, Matthew. This scripture's been read and talked about more than once already, but uh, I believe it's because the Spirit of God is saying something to us. More than once. So that we get it. Matthew 13 and 9. He said, who has ears to hear, let him hear. You know that that phrase occurs numerous times. In the scripture, several times in the book of Revelation, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. What does that mean? He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Uh, skip down to verse, well, well, let me read just part of it here for time's sake. He said, uh, verse 12, whoever has to him shall be given. He'll have more abundance. Whoever has not from him shall be taken away, even that which he has. Keep that in mind in connection with he that has ears to hear. He that has ears to hear. What you have is connected to what you hear and what you see. Therefore, I speak to them in parables because they seeing see not and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. 
And in them is fulfilled the prophecy in Isaiah which said, By hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross. Their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see. Oh, somebody grab that verse for yourself and say, My eyes see. He went on to say, And your ears, in other words, blessed. What does blessed mean? empowered, enabled, you could use the word too, quickened, made full of the God kind of life who is also light, enlightened to see, quickened to see, enlightened to hear, blessed to see, said out loud, my ears ears are blessed, blessed, empowered empowered to hear. Thank you, Lord. He goes on to say, Many prophets and righteous men have desired to see that which you see and have not seen them, and to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. Now, why couldn't I see you a while ago? (laughs) There were two different issues, right? One was my eyes were closed. Hmm? And what was the other one? I was I wasn't looking in the right direction. And so I couldn't see you. But there you are. You're right here. Right? Just cuz I didn't see you doesn't mean you needed to get here. That's right. Yes sir. Come on. That's right. That's right. You were here. Not just here. Right here. You were right here. This passage we just got through reading is obviously a very significant passage in the Word of God. It's found in Deuteronomy. It's found in, um, let's see, Isaiah. He's quoting Isaiah here. It's found in Ezekiel. It's found in Mark and Luke and John. The the same passage. It's found in the book of Acts. uh, It's found in Romans. This same passage. They'll have eyes to see and not see and ears to hear and not hear and they won't understand. That same passage is quoted all these times through the Old Testament, through the prophets, through the gospel, all four gospel accounts, through the epistles. This must be, how many know if it's one time in the Word, it's significant. If he keeps repeating it over and over and over and over again, it is of the utmost significance. And When he says, they have eyes that that don't see, they see but they don't see, they hear but they don't hear. Notice back up in the 15th verse again. Their eyes they have closed. Now you read other accounts, you'll see it also says that they close their ears. Who closed their eyes and ears? They did. They did. Now here's, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but the the Lord can say some of the simplest things to you, but they are life changing. Sitting right here, when Brother Kenneth was speaking the other night, the Lord said to me, he said, if you can close your eyes, you also can open them. (laughs) We're not talking about physically, are we? He's not talking about physically. If you can close your eyes, you can open them. Is it true, saints? This is something you initiate, not God. Something we initiate. Just like you can open and close, and I can open and close my eyes physically, we can open and close our eyes spiritually. And we can open and close our ears spiritually. And we can harden and close our heart or we can open our heart. It's within our power. We are multi-dimensional beings. 
capable of operating in both realms simultaneously. And we have for the most part operated in the physical, in the natural, and on the odd occasion, <laughs> tapping into that other realm a little bit here and there. But how many believe it's obvious that Jesus was aware of the other realm all the time? Yes. Amen. Wasn't he? Yes, he, was. he operated fully in both realms every day and night, simultaneously. Did he say, he that says he abides in him ought to walk even as he walks? And the works he did, we'll do. The only way we will do the works he did is doing them the way he did it. He said, I only say what I hear the Father say. I only do what I see the Father see. Uh, and we know that. But here's the question. How do you see him? How do you hear him? How was Jesus hearing him? The same way you're hearing me. With his ears. The same way we're seeing each other with our eyes. But we're not just an outer man. We're an inner man and an outer man. Can you say amen? Yes. Say it out loud. Blessed are my eyes, are my eyes. for they see. they see. Blessed are my ears, are my ears. for they hear. Glory to God. I have seeing eyes. I have hearing ears. I have a discerning heart. Hallelujah. Go with me to uh, 2 Corinthians, no, excuse me, uh, Romans, the 8th chapter, please. The anointing is increasing. <laughs> don't you like it? Don't, don't you like it? Woo. <laughs> uh, Romans 8 and 5. Romans 8 and 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind. Everybody say mind. mind. They do mind the things of the flesh. Now, I think the word flesh, we have a limited understanding when we use that word. Let's use the word physical today. Because flesh is not just talking about your body. Only, it's talking about everything your body is made from and everything your body connects. The physical world, the physical realm. They that are, that live after, that are rather after the physical, they mind the things of the physical, but they that are after the spirit, they mind the things of the spirit for to be carnally or physically minded is death. Whatever you mind, you contact. You remember the, lang the language used? If any agree as touching anything they shall ask. See, a lot of times we've read things and thought they were figurative. And they're not figurative. They're not symbolic. When we really join our hearts in faith and put our minds on the thing at the same time, we touch it. We really touch it. Spiritually. I believe we can get a taste of the powers of the world to come. Yes. To, that there are overlap between the speed of light and the speed of thought. And that you, you see that 
there are times when God does things in people's lives and he speaks to them and when they hear the word, you hear what you see and when you see it and your mind is there, you're there. Just like that. And we have thought we were limited to this. We've lived like we were caged and limited. <laughs> but we are not just physical men. Amen. The Spirit of God, everybody say Spirit. Spirit. The Spirit of God is not even limited to one form. He manifests as fire, yes. wind, shape of a dove. He's not a dove. That's just a form he took. Jesus appeared in different forms. Because when the body is resurrected and glorified, it can match the spirit. The body can keep up with the recreated spirit. Once it's been changed. Glory to God. Amen. Jesus didn't, he didn't have to use the door. After he was raised from the dead. But something that I believe it would, would help us so much right now. Before this change happens in our body. Is to understand the power of the focus of the mind. I remember Brother Hagin talking about as a young minister. He said he lived, uh, the house they lived in was very, very small. He didn't have a dedicated office. And so the kids would be making noise and different things would be happening. And he had to learn how to just get in a corner by himself and just focus on the Word. And all this other stuff was going on, but he just, he was there. And he talked about it a bit here and there, and I, that you have to develop powers of concentration to be spiritual. You know, cultic religions try to tell you to become mindless, just empty your mind, and just float on the cosmic nothingness. That's devil talk. <laughs> God never told you. To be mindless. That's right. He told you to set your mind on specific things. Why? Because when we put our minds on something, we open our spirit up to it. And we can contact it. We're actually touching things when our mind is on it. Spiritually, which is why, another reason, you can be defiled. Your spirit can be defiled by thinking and meditating on the wrong things. You remember 2 Corinthians talks about us cleansing ourselves from all fl filthiness of, of the flesh, the, the spirit as well. Because we're touching things. You know, some folks saw that had been yielding to self-pity and, and depression and, and angst and envy and holding grudges that's been depressed over a length of time, shut up with the curtains pulled and the cool cloth on their head and crying. If, if their eyes were opened and they could see what's laying in the bed with them, after taking four or five showers, <laughs> it's defiling. And it's real. I said it's real. Folks have talked about spiritual things as though they're imaginary. It's, it hasn't been real. The universe is real. There's more than one dimension. Angels are real. Hmm? Demons are real. Not to be feared by the child of God. Hmm? They're afraid of us. Resist the devil and he will. 
run away. Somebody say he runs away. He runs, he runs away. You stomp your foot and say, get out of here in Jesus' name, and he runs away. He runs away. But there's, there's a fear of the spiritual. Because it's so foreign to most folks. And we've been believing for some things for decades concerning miracles. Can I get at least one amen? amen. And, and signs and wonders. But I assure you, as they begin to happen more and more, and we, we've seen amazing things, but as some of these signs and wonders begin to happen, they'll be different than we thought they would be. And they'll, some of them will be very strange to our minds because it's not natural. And we see in the, in the beginning days of the church when certain things happened, the Bible said fear fell on everybody. They'd see and hear these things and they're, just, they're in awe. But this realm that's being manifested into the natural, it's, it's always been here. It's here right now. Right now. Oh, somebody say glory to God. They that are after the flesh, they do mind. The Amplified says they set their mind. Set their mind on things of the flesh. They that are after the spirit, they set their mind on things of the spirit. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 8, so they that are in the flesh, everybody say in the flesh. They that are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. How am I to understand that? Are you in the flesh here today? <laughs> You're in your body? What does this mean? Everybody said out loud, inner man, inner man. outer man. Outer. In the spirit, in the flesh. He's not talking about living in the body when he says in the flesh. Elsewise, everybody who was in the body couldn't please God. Hmm. What does it mean in the flesh? Well, don't separate it from the verse we just got through reading. They that are after the flesh. They that are in the flesh, live in the flesh, operate in the flesh, what's the connector? They set their mind on the things in the physical realm. It's the connector. The mind is the connector. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Say it out loud, I'm not in the flesh. But in the, in the Spirit. Our other verses, I mean Galatians, the epistles are, are replete with talking about in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit. What does it mean? These things have been too vague to us. They, they've been too fairy tale-ish, <laughs> imaginary. For, for the past two or three years particularly, I, I've been praying, it just keeps coming up in me, Lord, Open my eyes. I just know there is so much junk that we have thought about you and spiritual reality. People have made up stuff and preached it. And folks believed it because they didn't know any better. But God is real. <laughs> He's real. His Holy Spirit is real. Angels are real. Spiritual forces are real, and we don't have to be a prophet to see and hear. Prophets are called seers. They're going to see in different ways and on different levels. But every child of God is not supposed to live in the flesh. You're supposed to see and hear. Perceive. And hear and understand. Say it out loud again. My eyes, my eyes see. see. My ears, my ears hear. hear. The mind is the connector. 
In, uh, go, go to 1 Corinthians 14, please. 1 Corinthians 14. Let's do an exercise and just demonstrate this. We already know a lot more about this than we think we do. First Corinthians 14 and uh, 13, 14, 13. Wherefore let him that speaks in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, the Holy Ghost prays. No? Uh-uh. If I pray in an unknown tongue, what's happening? My spirit is praying, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will. Everybody say, I will. I will, I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Everybody say, will, will. Two things we've touched on, mind and will. How do you see what can't be seen? You look at it. <laughs> How do you look at it? You're going to see what you focus on. The mind contacts the physical and the spiritual simultaneously, all the time. My mind is connected to this on this side, and my mind's connected to spirit and the Holy Spirit in me on the other side. All the time. <laughs> and I can see out. And I can see in. And I can hear out. And I can hear in. I can speak out. And I can speak in. I can touch out. And I can touch in. In fact, all of my senses go both ways. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5 talks about growing up, maturing. I'm going to read the Weiss translation. Just, just stay where you are. But Hebrews 5.14 says, Solid food belongs to those who are spiritually mature, to those who on account of long usage have their powers of perception. Senses could be translated organs of perception. But they, but, but they didn't say physical senses. It said senses. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about spiritual development. Yes. Their powers of perception are exercised to the point they're able to discriminate between both that which is good in character and that which is evil. I can pray with the Spirit. I can pray with the understanding. I can sing with the Spirit. I can sing with the understanding. I know uh, I grew up Pentecostal. And uh, after going to Ramah Bible Training Center and, and being in the ministry for just a year or two, and uh, I, I saw some of my relatives that I had known years past, and one of them cornered me and said, uh, she, she said, I heard that y'all believe you can just speak in tongues anytime you want to. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah. She said, no, no. No, no. No, scoffed. She said, no. She said, you can't turn the Holy Ghost off and on anytime you want to. It just came right up out of my spirit. I said, he's always on. He's always on. And any time you'll yield to him, he'll give you utterance. I want you to say, quote the alphabet for me. A, B, 
C, D, E, now talk in tongues. Kofri no monk son tele kajdechi, esa calavre, vome lombranse, shande alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, tongues. Kofri mengzari, esh nele kasto. What are you doing? What are you doing? Spirit inside, memory outside. I remember here, Brother Hagin, you know, if y'all were in some of his meetings, he'd get to talking in tongues sometime in a meeting, get where he couldn't speak English. <laughs> and then he'd sometimes he'd stop and say, wait a minute now, I got to get my tongue hooked back up to my spirit. You ever hear him say that? Because he'd, he'd stop to explain something. Maybe he had been prophesying. He'd stop to explain it. And what has happened, he's gotten over in his mind some. And he wants to get back to that. So he says, I've got to get my tongue hooked back up to my spirit. Well, if your tongue can be connected to two different things, and your ears can be connected to two different things, and your eyes can be connected to two different things, are y'all with me, saints? And if I can say I will speak out of my spirit or I will speak in connection with what I've learned out here and see and know, why can't I see that way? Why can't I hear that way? Why can't I touch that way? Why would it be limited to one sense? The mind is the connector. Whatever we focus on. We, we, we're doing this already. When it comes time for, to get the message, what do you do? Huh? You look for it. Is that right? Ask, it'll be given to you and seek and you shall find. You have to focus on it. What are you, you're not looking out the window. You're not just looking in the natural. Where are you looking? Anybody ever found a message? Yeah. Found what you're supposed to preach? Yeah. Found what you're supposed to... Where did you find it? Where did you look? We, all, we already know something about this. We've already been doing this on a low level. But we can exercise these senses. Anybody with me now? We, we can exercise these senses until we develop much greater in them. And our powers of focus and concentration can become sharp and very strong so that when we set our, our mind on something, we contact it. When we're ministering to people, we're not supposed to just look at the outside and let them tell them all their stories and what they think. Most of the time, they don't know what they need. That's why they're there asking us. Right. Right. And we can see things yes. if we'll look for them. Yes. They're there. I'm not talking about having open visions per se. I know uh, one of the visions that uh, Brother Hagin had. He talked about the Lord showed him, gave him instruction about different types of vision. Different types of spiritual seeing. And I want to refer to three different things uh, Brother Hagin said the head of the church told him. He mentioned spiritual seeing. He talked about trances. And he talked about open visions. He said spiritual vision is very, the, the lowest type of vision and the highest type of revelation are very similar. What does that mean? You already know about this. Have you ever said, sitting in a message, reading your Bible, uh, and, and revelation came to you and you said... I see that. I see that. We got to get our minds renewed. That's not a figure of speech. 
You really did see it. Just like you're looking at me. <laughs> we, we're already seeing things. Anybody that the Lord showed you some things about your ministry or about this phase or this plan or these steps, it wasn't natural, but you, you had a sense of it and you could see it. Maybe not all the details, but, but you're, where, where are you seeing that? That's not because it's not physical. People tend to think it's imaginary. And they link that with unreal, fantasy. Well, God is spirit, but he's not fantasy. Right? He's real. He's real. Spiritual vision is when you're more aware of the physical realm. You're seeing some things, but you're more aware physically than you are spiritually. I, I'm not, I don't want to use a percentage, but you're mostly aware physically and you're some aware spiritually. When you say, I see it, I got it. He mentioned the next one was the trance. We see trances in the Old Testament. We see trances in the New Testament. Peter fell into a trance. And this is when your physical senses are suspended. You're not aware physically at all. You're only aware spiritually. You're seeing and hearing spirit only, not spirit and natural. Balaam describes some of this that he experienced. Um, let's see if I can read it to you. He said he was the man in, in Numbers 24, 3, whose eyes are open. And verse 4 said, he, verse 4 said, he heard the words of God. He saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. His eyes are open, but he's not seeing anything natural. He's only seeing spirit. And then finally, the, the Lord talked to Brother Hagin about the highest type was the open vision. And the open vision, it, he, he described how that he was in the hospital on something and he heard a footsteps coming down the hall. He thought it was the nurse. The door opened. He was just looking down and he saw hairy legs. He thought, well, that's not the nurse. <laughs> and <laughs> he looked up and it was Jesus. He said he saw him just like he's seeing you in the natural. See, Jesus walked around the bed, took a chair and pulled it up to the uh, uh, bed and sat down and talked to him for a length of time about his ministry. He's seeing in both realms completely, simultaneously. That's the open vision. Now some of these things don't happen all the time or for everybody. Like an open vision. Might happen once in a lifetime. Might never happen to you. Wouldn't mean you were unspiritual. But doesn't mean you can't see. And you can't hear. Hmm? You can. Said out loud, my eyes are blessed. They can see. My ears are blessed. They can hear. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's been talk about spiritual warfare. And there is spiritual warfare. But it, it's happening differently than, than some people think. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 4 that the God of this world is doing what? He's blinding the minds of those that don't believe lest they should see the glorious light of the gospel and be saved. Going out and telling somebody the truth by the anointing is a direct assault on the kingdom of darkness. It's like launching a weapon at them. And when somebody sees the light, all the demons in hell can't keep them from getting saved. I don't care what they think, what they try to do. 
If somebody sees the truth, the truth will make you free, brother. You see it and you believe it and you receive it. No demon, nothing can stop you from getting saved. Any other part of the Word of God. So the devil thrives in darkness. His objective is to keep everybody blind and dumb and deaf. Physical only. And if all you're ever contacting is the physical, then all you're ever contacting is death. To be carnally minded is death. Setting your mind, because everything in this realm has got death in it. Everything. The, the planet itself is groaning because it's dying. All the earthquakes and all the weather issues and people talk about save the planet. We're not going to be able to save the planet. It's, same thing is happening to our bodies. It's happening to the planet. Death is, death is in every plant, every animal, everything down here. The curse has permeated the place with death. But you and I are not just physical beings. Oh, saints, help me out. You and I are born of God. We become new creations. Old things have passed away. There's no death in my spirit. None. 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 I'm made in the likeness and image of the Almighty. Hallelujah. I'm a being of light. You're a being of light. We're just looking at these bodies, but I'm telling you, inside, you're glorious. You're glorious. You're a brilliant, shining being. And you don't have to wait till you die to touch more of this. Say it again, I can see. I can hear. My eyes are blessed. My ears are blessed. We're not limited to the physical. We don't just live in the flesh. If you just live in the flesh, you can't please God, Romans said. The flesh profiteth nothing, Jesus said. That doesn't mean you're in, not in the body. We are in the body. But we don't just live limited to this physical contact. We can exercise our senses. We, we all know how to look around. Open our eyes and look around physically. Do you know how to do it spiritually? You can do the same thing spiritually. You can look around. You can listen. I'm not talking about hearing audible voices. I'm not talking about having open visions. Some of these things will happen. But that's not the way you live every day. But people thought if you didn't have an open vision, you're just carnal. Just 100% earth aware. That's it. <laughs> that's a sad existence. Like Paul said, if in this life only we got hope, we are of all men most miserable. Go to Colossians 2, please. Excuse me, I'm moving too fast. Go to Luke 11, and then maybe we'll get to Colossians 2. How can you see what is not seen, what is unseen? By looking at it. Same way you do physically. How do I look at something spiritually? Luke 11 and 33, this again is the Weiss translation. Luke eleven thirty three. 33, he says, No one having lit a lamp puts it in a cellar or under the grain measure, but upon the lampstand, in order that those who are entering from time to time may what? See the light. The lamp of the body is the eye. This is the weast now. When your eye is in single focus... When your eye is in single focus, sound fulfilling its function, your whole body is well lighted. 
He's not just talking about physical light and physical seeing. What we focus on and what we set our mind on, our spirit contacts. Whether it's death or whether it's life. Hallelujah. And just like we get things, we're getting information out here through our five physical senses that's informing our mind. We, you are aware of this room, of its temperature, of its space, of its color, of all kind of things because of the information you're getting through your senses. You're getting information, I'm getting information at the same time through my spirit. Yes. Yes. But, but have we been paying attention to it? Have we been looking at it? Have we been listening for it? Without trying to have open visions or fall into trances, have we just made an effort to open our eyes and see what's there. Hear what's there. Paul said this in Colossians 2. Colossians 2 and 5. To the church there, he said, this is God's word translation. He says, although I'm absent from you physically, I am with you in spirit. Colossians 2.5, God's word translation. Although I'm absent from you physically, I'm with you in spirit. I'm happy to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith is in Christ. This is not something somebody told him. He saw it. But don't assume he had an open vision. We talked about at least three different levels of seeing. You remember the, the spiritual vision. You're mostly aware of the natural, but you're seeing some things inside too. We're very familiar with this. The trance, where you're not aware of the physical at all. You're just seeing spiritual. And then the open vision. That's got to be neat, huh? <laughs> seeing, hearing, feeling both realms at once. Remember Elisha when Gehazi went and ran down uh, Naaman and told him he'd take the, the, the things that his master told him they weren't going to take? When he got back, you know, Elisha said, went not mine heart with you? Uh, when the man turned again from his chariot, I believe this is different from what we just read in Colossians. What do you mean? Elisha was there. He, his heart was there. He was there. He saw it and heard it. This is the prophet's ministry. But Paul, when he says, I was with you in spirit, different phrase. He was at his, wherever he was, I'm sure there were times even when he was in prison, or there were times when he was at his place of ministry, a country away, three countries away, and he just got to praying and looked their way. And reached out in love and faith towards them. And when he did that, his spirit contacted him. And he began to be aware of things about their condition. And he saw it. Somebody say glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John says in Revelation, you remember he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I think sometimes we've tried to make that too spectacular. Now don't misunderstand me. What happens after that is off the chart spectacular. It goes to talk about he was called up in the spirit, the spirit caught him away. That's not the same thing as saying in the, I was in the spirit. 
Not the same thing. And the fact that he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, why would you say that? This is a custom of his. <laughs> this is something he does every Lord's day. <laughs> is he, he tunes out from the natural. This is not weird. This is Christian. <laughs> This is being spiritual. You don't have to be a prophet to do this. <laughs> but you, you exercise your ability to look, not just in the natural, but in the spirit. You open your eyes and you look for it. The Bible said you have not. Why? Because you ask not. Ask and what? It'll be given you. What else? Seek. So many things I believe are available to us if we just ask for them and then look for them. What I mean by look for them is not scramble around in the natural and call everybody you know. Close your natural eyes and look that direction and just keep looking there and open your spirit up and expect to see. And in your spirit by faith, open your eyes up and look that direction. Somebody said out loud, I can see. My eyes are blessed. I can hear. My ears are blessed. Stand on your feet, please. Oh, hallelujah. Pray in the Spirit some with me. Hook your tongue up to your spirit. Close your eyes and and look. Look with your eyes closed. Often the gi bene ene besa. Asena gi ene ene jita. Osela du reve grek badeje. Osele pre fona pa le conosena li. Ele conchana di negale shinado. O secare dici. Hallelujah. Listen to me for just a moment. Keep your eyes closed. Listen to me for just a moment. A number of situations have been bu bugging people, chronic, recurring, ongoing, long duration. And the Lord dealt with me. Uh, we've looked at it in the natural. We've just kept looking at it in the natural. Just kept looking at it. Right now, on purpose, look at that, not in the natural, look at it in the Spirit. As we pray in the Spirit, look at that issue, b develop a power of focus, a power of concentration. Put your eyes on it. Put your, reach out your mind, put, set your mind on it, touch it. Touch it and examine it. Look at it. Hallelujah. Pray some more in the Spirit. Asique, Argena Donia Neviki, Hapel Azud of Nom and Gau in Great Bunny Nin in the Gilek De for Caro, Esatovina and Non the Four a Prev on Jude Rock de Zero. Oh, she la crazy. She la crazy. She la crazy. 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 She ke vete. Ailen panasi. Oh, she foyete cause about my number rochi. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is something we develop in. It's something you, you, can, you can get better at, get stronger at, having their senses exercised. Say it one more time. Close your eyes. Say it one more time. My eyes are blessed. I see. My ears are blessed. My ears are blessed. I, hear. I hear. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Brother Kenneth. Glory to God. Continue to pray in the Holy Ghost. Brandon Guri Tikli Kish Dig Sis Eleke Pahla Kampra Karakata Barra Dengi Dilistok Sussisisikikita Gala Mambro Boko 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 Bahaba Fred and Grande Ilikitiko Boka The other um I gave you my testimony about those symptoms and the fact that for the first time in, well, I don't even want to try to remember, that I have actually uh, was sick. And um, I'd gone to bed that night, and I, I went to bed early, and, and just lying there on my side, and I was doing what Brother Keith has described. And I'm lying there on, on my, my side, and I just rolled over on my back. I've got my eyes shut. And uh, no, I wasn't either. I was, I was still on my side the first time. I'm lying there, and in my bed on my side, I can open my eyes and see the bedroom door on that, in that corner in front of me, oh, you know, 20 feet away maybe, and it goes out the hallway. Well, I'm laying there on the side, but I got my eyes closed. And I said, now, now, now listen to the sequence. I'm just lying there. I said, I see you, sir, coming through that door, walking over here and putting your hand on my head. And I put my own hand on, on my own head. Now, I am not requiring the Lord Jesus to come down from heaven to heal me. He sent his word and it healed me. I'm not asking for some kind of vision to see something or other to bolster or booster my faith. I don't seek dreams and visions and trances and so forth to, to help me have faith or anything else because they're not promised. But I do expect them. And I expect them in, in, in this kind of a routine. I put my own hand on my own head. I see you, sir. And with my eyes closed, right on the screen of my mind, just as plain, because with my eyes shut, just like Brother uh, Moore did a while ago, I, with my eyes shut, I can still see Gloria. I can still see Brother Keith. I can still see all of you. But and with my eyes shut, I could see the door. Because I'm laying there like this. I put my hand on my head, and with my eyes shut looking at that door, he come through it. And I saw him with my eyes shut just as plain as I'm looking at Jerry. Now, if I had opened my eyes and tried to touch him with my flesh, he wouldn't have been there. You don't contact the spirit realm with your flesh. I kept my eyes closed. I still had my hand on my head. He came through that door, came right over there, and sat down on the side of my bed. And right then, hold it for me. Right then, I had the sense to put my other hand, I don't mean brains, I'm talking about I sense that you have spiritual senses, it's the same way you do physical sense. Quit saying, I feel led. Develop, develop 
and renew your mind. I don't feel in my spirit. I sense in my spirit that we need to do this or that or that. I sense that in my spirit. I'm like this. He's sitting there on the side of the bed, and I just put my, my hand on the back of my neck, and when I did, the word of the Lord come up in my spirit. Amen. The very comfort of God came down through my physical being. And before I had time to enjoy it much, I was sound asleep. <laughs> Slept all night long just like a baby. Amen. And it wasn't but just a little bit of time is when he said and corrected me and showed me where I'd missed it. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Oh, folks, do you know what? We in heaven already. See, we've been raised up and made to sit with him in heavenly places. We're already there. We're already there. We're not employed in the earth. We're deployed. We're on a mission from heaven. That's where we live. That's where our citizenship is. And that's where your spirit man is all the time. We're in two places at once because there's no, there is no time nor distance in the realm of the spirit. Jesus in one place spoke about a woman in another place and she got delivered. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. I think it's shouting time. I think it's shouting time. Glory to God. Hallelujah.